Hi there. Thank you for coming to King County Emergency Management's Virtual Disaster Preparedness Training. I'm Disaster Ready Danny, and you might remember me from our previous video series where other King County Emergency Management experts taught me and you the basics about disaster preparedness. Well, I've learned a thing or two since then, and now I'm ready to teach you a little bit more about how to be King County ready. Today, we'll be joined by my coworker and mentor, Sophia Lopez. Hey, Roland. All right. And a small audience who will be joining us virtually to ask questions throughout the presentation. And by you, of course. So let's get right to it. We get prepared for work. We get prepared for school. Why not get prepared for that which could be the most devastating? But before you can get prepared, you have to ask yourself, what are you preparing for? So I'm going to ask you, what hazards are you at most risk for? Flooding. Power outages. Snowstorms. Earthquake. Wildfires. Landslides. In King County, we're prone to quite a few different types of disasters, both natural and man-made. One tool that you can use to help you really hone down what are you at risk for is the hazardready.org website. You can go and input your personal address or your work address. And when you click on each of those tabs, you can then see what is the level of risk. Are you at a low risk, a medium, or high risk for that specific hazard at that specific address? In King County, the biggest threat that we are preparing for is that of an earthquake. It's not a matter of if, but when. I'm gonna ask Danny to talk to you a little bit more about what exactly are we looking at when we plan for earthquakes. Thanks, Sophia. So when it comes to earthquakes, there's really three main types that we need to know about. The first type is the shallow earthquake. These earthquakes happen pretty frequently and you might not even know that they happened. The next type is a deep earthquake. This earthquake has a lot more potential for devastating effects on our society. One example of a deep earthquake is the 2001 Nisqually earthquake, which you might have experienced or already be familiar with. This earthquake caused a lot of damage to our region and similar earthquakes of this type can have the same potential for negative impacts. Following the deep earthquake, we have to worry about the subduction zone earthquake here in the Pacific Northwest. The subduction zone earthquake is the big one that we hear a lot about. The Cascadia fault line sits off the coast of Washington and is a 700 mile long fault line with the potential to create a 9.0 earthquake or even higher. This earthquake would substantially change life for us here in King County and planning for it pretty much makes us ready for any other type of disaster considering how impactful and how dangerous this particular disaster would be. So I guess the first question is, what should you do while an earthquake is happening? Should you go to a door frame? That's a popular answer. Once upon a time, the messaging was to go to a door frame, but now nationally, we are actually recommending that you drop cover and hold on. So let's break that down. Drop cover, hold on. What does that mean? When the shaking starts, drop to the floor, get cover underneath the nearest table, and then hold on to it to make sure that the surface of the table stays over your head and provides coverage from any falling objects that might injure you. What if I can't get under the table? If you can't get under a table within three seconds or three steps of an earthquake starting, you need to drop cover and hold on where you are, and you're holding on to yourself. You're covering and curling into a ball, you're protecting your head, your neck, and your vital organs. This is why you curl up. I know someone in a wheelchair or a walker, what do they do? For those in a wheelchair, you need to sit and stay in your wheelchair and lock your wheels and tuck and cover your head. Should you use a cane, use your cane as a resource to help you get down to the ground as, as best and safely as you can. The goal is to protect your vital organs, protect your neck, protect your head. So what if I'm outside hiking in the woods? If you find yourself outside when the shaking starts, drop cover and hold right where you are. You are safer protecting your vital organs than if you try to run during an earthquake. What if I'm in a car? You need to pull your vehicle over and stay in your vehicle. You are safer pulling over and staying in your vehicle until the shaking stops. So now that we've discussed what to do during an earthquake, what comes next? What does the world look like after an earthquake or any other worst case scenario emergency? 
Thank you.